and uh, welcome to uh, this week's, well it's going to be my Arclight 2011 YouTube story. Uh, we're going to do an update on the iodine 131 in Europe um, and we're also going to do an update on the Holden thorium nuclear reactor that is based in Norway. Now what we're seeing basically is a never-ending story. You can see that written just there. Never-ending story. That's by Rainbow Warriors, um, who is uh, basically my friend, uh, uh, sort of Hervé Courtois from France. He has a daughter in uh, Fukushima Prefecture, and uh, he's been covering the stories there, nuclear stories. And I just wanted to quickly, just before we get going, is just sort of say to you that if you go to nuclear-news.net. Um, you'll see this post, which um, is, he's actually, his computer's broken down, and uh, we're trying to get, well, it's, it's nearly broken down, it's on its way out, and um, he's uh, limited to what he can do. So I've just put a little post up there for him, and I've also linked to his GoFundMe um, uh, sort of page, and, you know, his friends basically said to him, you know, because he was saying, oh, my computer's knackered, and I said, look, just, you know, we, we said, just put, get a GoFundMe account, We'll put it up onto our blogs and see if we can't get get uh, you know the small amount of money you need, you know for for this. And he never asked for money. We never asked for money. It's all done free. Uh, we're doing it. You know you can tell by my camera. That it's you know it's not brilliant, but it does the job. Um, we get the information out there. Uh, the blog WordPress is a free WordPress blog. Um, and you know at the end of the day there's no advertising. I think uh, WordPress does put one advert up on every thirty clicks or something uh, to pay for the actual um, uh, the, the, the blog that we use uh, but we get no no uh, financial benefit from it um, if you could help him out that would be great anyway on to the story now there was uh, you know I reported on my last video and on nuclear news dash net as well um, I'll just take you over there we I did this video here I think you remember seeing last week and I've posted that on Nuclear News because at the end with a little uh, intro just to say, you know, this is what it was. And we decided that um, I mentioned Holden and various other things that are going on. But at the end of the day, um, we tracked that one, that major January uh, sort of release, uh, largely to uh, Hungary, which is the medical isotope reactor, which, you know, had done a, a big release. Um, but also on top of that, we we had uh, an incident in Spain I mentioned, and we also had uh, Holden in uh, Norway, uh, which basically you know was also releasing um, had a release in October last year, uh, three or four months ago, and um, their reactor had basically had a meltdown, the same thing that happened in Fukushima. But we didn't, we had very few. Now that I linked to uh, the only sort of um, uh, thing on the internet that mentioned it. It was from the uh, National Radiological Protection Association in Norway who had a decency to at least let us know that this had happened. The mainstream media in Norway and Europe had decided to not pick it up. Uh, the um, uh, I started to, I had a ment talk with uh, Bologna in, uh, in Norway who are a nuclear waste and safety organization, a bit like the French CREAD. Um, and uh, ACRO, also in France. Uh, these these organisations are um, started up after sort of uh, Chernobyl uh, because of uh, the cover up that occurred. Uh, the IAEA uh, did a, a report then and said that if there is a nuclear incident, uh, it had to be covered, um, and uh, you know we had to get the early release data so we could work out what the health effects were on people because that didn't happen in Chernobyl. All the Chernobyl data, generally, it was um, uh, worked out using a model, what they call a model, a statistical model. They backtracked the data and made some assumptions, if you like, on, uh, on what the actual release was. And, uh, of course, that was because of cover-up. Nobody got the initial measurements, um, and uh, so, therefore, we don't really know. We can't really say what the effects will be. And I don't agree with the dose model they use anyway, but, but they, they covered up the actual data that would work out the dose. Anyway, so um, that in Fukushima, one of the big things that the IEA did said, they said, oh, well, you didn't, you didn't uh, get the data from the radiation release in the early days. And the uh, Japanese were saying, oh, well, our, 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 uh, our um, 
uh, our, our monitors, our Geiger counters got so uh, dirty we couldn't uh, we couldn't tell if it was a, the correct sort of reading, or the monitors weren't switched on, or there wasn't enough monitors either to actually tell where this radiation was spreading throughout the Fukushima prefecture and surrounding prefectures like Miyagi and Chiba, you know, near Tokyo, Miyagi just north of. Fukushima and up into the mountains and possibly over the other side of the mountains as well. So um, the IEA, uh, who are pro-nuclear, uh, they, they, they want uh, to promote nuclear um, in all the countries, including dodgy countries like you know, uh, Zimbabwe and all these other places, um, uh, you know, which would, uh, without a doubt, at some point, be used, these nuclear reactors would be used to uh, pr uh, make a nuclear weapon, as we see in Israel and uh, uh, as we saw in North Korea and other places. But anyway, so we're here we are, and <clears throat> the bottom line is the Fukushima report said that the Japanese also didn't get this early data. But I know that the Bel uh, Bologna were there were there in Tokyo within the first days and they offered to, they had the equipment and they had the, they, they were going to go there and measure at their own risk and they were going to measure the actual levels as best they could um, and get some real data on how much, you know, what the, what the levels of radiation in the uh, surrounding areas were. And the, tur the Japanese turned around and said, no, no, you can't do that. And it was two years before Bologna could get there with their with their equipment, and then they were taken on a PR sort of uh, move. However, Bologna also went to visit people that were victims of the contamination, and they did a fairly balanced report um, concerning what happened uh, after the uh, reactor and, and the ongoing situation. Anyway, bringing it to Norway, bringing it up to date, we've seen another nuclear incident, and it wasn't, re it wasn't um, basically reported for uh, something like 24 hours. Uh, so the company that owns the Holden Thorium Nuclear Reactor, IFE, basically had not contacted the NRPA, the Nuclear Radiological Protection Association in Norway. Uh, they left it 24 hours. Um, and fair play to the NRPA, they, they closed the reactor down, took the license away and said, you can't start this up until you sort this mess out. Um, and um, and then more recently they were uh, they went back and what had happened was is the um, IFE had turned round and sealed off the unit, sealed off the actual uh, 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 the reactor and the building, and um, and they said right okay there's no no worry for iodine one three one release there's no health issues don't worry about it. Now what had happened was is that basically the NRPA discovered that there was a build up of of uh, hydrogen because they weren't venting the actual reactor there was a build-up of hydrogen and what happened then was the uh, there was a risk of an explosion which would have caused a Chernobyl style nuclear meltdown big meltdown as opposed to just rods like a what's happened there now is like a three mile island type of uh, uh, sort of situation where some of the rods have burnt um, now at the end of the day, the NRPA is now sort of uh, is trying to sort of keep up with it, but they're not being informed by the IFE, you know, which we can now call the uh, TEPCO lookalike. And um, you know, this is coming up to the sixth anniversary of Fukushima uh, nuclear disaster in March the 11th, and we've got a meltdown going on in Europe, in Norway, and it's having the same problems that were brought up in the Fukushima. Um, sort of uh, nuclear accident report that the IAEA did, the pro-nuclear crowd did. So they're, they're ignoring all their advice and this is, is what will happen if any of the major nuclear reactors in Europe uh, melt down. Maybe Germany might, might be better, possibly Belgium, you know, there's some good people there. Uh, maybe France as well, possibly, uh, that they would sort of admit. But it's hard to say, isn't it? At the moment, Norway is not admitting it. Um, the NRPA in Norway are trying to do their job, and, uh, and fair play to them, well done guys. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, the business, the business behind it, the financial interests aren't interested in allowing transparency and what have you. So they're just saying there's no health effects, there's no health effects. So what's happening is, I'm going to take you down to this, I'll put a couple of little uh, 
logos on there. Uh, this is uh, this is the Eurodep radiation mapping, which uh, if you're on my videos, you'll be aware of um, in Norway. And this is the Holden map here, and you can see a big data gap there uh, in February the 20th to the 21st. Okay, and when we go to Oslo, very similar, around the same time. Now um, I've also done. I'm just going to do a refresh on this because I've also added another one from Sweden. Um, and um, so obviously the wind, it blows north, it blows east, it blows west. Um, and so when we go south, I mean, we've got, uh, we've got this. So we've got uh, Gothenburg in Sweden, which is south of the plant. And you can see uh, multiple data points missing there. They, they would be big spikes uh, showing that the iodine and radon, oh, sorry, I shall... Uh, zero that in the iodine and uh, uh, radon will be basically you know hidden uh, and of course there we I'll just take you back up here we've got the same thing in I'll just zero that in again same thing in Holden in Norway and Oslo now I've also looked at the west coast of Norway which is completely on the other side of the mountains but the, obviously these clouds have followed it around the coast and in Stavanger which is the west coast we've also got data point not quite not quite as big as this not for a whole kind of day but uh, but we have got a, a data point where iodine 131 reached the west coast um, now I know people on the west coast they've been complaining about flus and coughs and colds and things like this and one has to wonder if this may not have you know be connected to that so uh, that's that's uh, that. I've also added the report from Nils Bonner from Bologna, uh, March the 3rd, 2017, Norway's Holden Reactor, a poor safety culture and history of near misses. Now, I'm just going to quickly finish this one off because I don't want to go too long. I'll leave a link underneath for the uh, actual uh, article and the links to the Bologna article, which is below here. And uh, there you go.